Hello and welcome to this A310 video. This is the next video in the tutorial series. And what are we gonna do in today's video? This is gonna be the returning to airliner series, where we are going to be focusing on people who've flown airliners before, such as the A320 or the 737, and you wanna know specifically what do I have to do for the A310? It's gonna be a more complex level. We're not gonna be using the in-sim checklist. We're gonna do in a fair bit more explanations of why we press buttons and the more of the implications of different things like that. It's also gonna be a flight from stand 25 in Ibiza to Nice with exactly the same routing that we used in the new to airliners series. So without further ado, let's get started. So we're gonna look at the overhead panel. We're gonna make sure that the igniters are off and we're gonna make sure that both of the wipers are also off. Why do we do that? If we left the wiper in the on position and then we turn the batteries on, the wiper will start to wipe the window and it's a nice dry sunny day as it normally is and that could actually damage the wiper blade or damage the window so we don't want to do that. Then we make sure that the throttles are at idle, we make sure that the reverse thrust is stowed and we make sure the engine master switches so the HP valves are off and we make sure the landing gear lever is down. Then we move on to the overhead panel here we make sure that the batteries one, two and three are off. We move to the DC bus selector and we read the voltage of the batteries from here. We make sure they're all above 25. You can see they're all slightly different because that's actually simulated. And if they were not above 25 volts, then we would connect the external power and leave the batteries off for them to charge. So they all look like they're good. So we're gonna put battery one, two and three on. As you can hear, some things come alive uh, you can also hear the batteries now connected and the humming noise. So we are going to be doing an APU battery start. If we didn't want to do that, we could simply connect the external power and continue from there. But we are going to do that. So then we need to do the APU fire test before we start it. There's the lights, there's the sounds. So that's good. So now we can simply move down and start the APU. To start the APU, master switch to on. We get the low pressure light here because the APU has its own fuel pump. It just had to turn on and draw the fuel through the fuel pump line. So for a moment, it has a low pressure. If you use the main fuel pumps from the aircraft, you don't get the low pressure light, but because we're on battery power, they're not available. So we press start. Now, once we press start, there's a few other indications. The APU door is now opening slowly and it takes a while to open. So at the moment, nothing is happening. We know that the APU is actually starting when we get the blue Excel lights here. So it will show that it's accelerating. And then when it's finished accelerating, you get the green avail light on the left to show that it's available. But we can monitor the APU start from the actual back panel on the A310. So here I'm on the rear right side of the A310 and this is the maintenance panel. You can actually see the exhaust gas temperature rising. N1 is also rising and we can see that the APU is starting. There's no other way to view the APU other than from this gauge during a battery only start. Saying that on an A320, you can't view it at all. So actually this is quite a nice solution. So we're just waiting for the APU to come online. You can now see the blue Excel light showing that it's accelerating and shortly we'll see it click across to avail. Okay, there's the system come on. As you can see, the batteries were drained quite significantly. They're now charging themselves back up after the APU battery start and they'll do that automatically. So next thing we need to do is go back onto the overhead and we go to the fuel panel and we go make sure that the inner tank pump 2 is on. Why do we do this? This is the fuel pump that's now running the APU, as we talked about before. Probe and window heat, we check are off, because they are. Vent, vent system, we check that all the lights are off. We've already checked that, so it's fine. And the enunciate light test, we do now. So we hear the wind shear warning. We see everything on the overhead change to its on position and also you see the fuel panel go 888 as a self test as well. Now we can put the APU bleed to on. When we put the APU bleed on 
can you see that the panel automatically reconfigures itself. So the cross feed goes to on, pack one and pack two come on. And what we get is the flow bar go inline green. What is that? So in A310, the flow bar is basically this straight green line here and here and here, for example. So why they did it is these diagrams that you can see actually help you understand how the system works. So let's say that the air is flowing from here and we have a flow bar now in green. So, oh, okay, so we can get to here, it can get to here, and then it can go here and here and it can flow through there and it can get to the cockpit and all the different parts of the thing. Now it's not just air, it's also fuel, see, and electricity. So if you see these not illuminated, that means the flow bar is off. So if you see me mentioning that, that's what we're talking about. Next, let's move on to the parking brake. Okay, so we need to make sure that this is above 1,500 PSI and this is in the green arc. It is, but we've simulated this, so it's quite cool. If you turn it off and on, off and on, off and on, you can see that the pressure actually gets less and less and less because we have no hydraulic pressure actually keeping this topped up. So it's going to get less and less the more times you use it. So how do we get the pressure back into the accumulator? Well, we have a nice little function here called the accumulator pressure charge. We press it once for on and it will charge up. Once it's fully charged, press it again and it goes off. And you can see, look, the accumulator has fully charged itself back up. So that's really good. Next check we do is not needed for every flight, but they do this occasionally, but we're going to do it now just to show off how it's done. So alternate system, braking test, so we put this to alternate on, then we make sure the parking brake is off, we would make sure that the chocks were in, we don't have chocks in the A310 yet, uh, but the engines are off, so it's not going to roll anywhere, so that's fine. Then what we do is we go on our normal foot brakes and we start to brake. So can you see how, look, you can actually see when I brake, the needles on the triple indicator are moving because I'm now using the alternate braking system and I'm also draining the accumulator, which is correct. So that's a successful test. Put the parking brake back on, put this back to normal, charge the system back up, and there we go, we are good. This is where we would do the exterior walk around. We're not gonna do that, uh, just to save time, because it's basically the standard stuff you would expect with an airline. You're looking for all the same things on the exterior, uh, so there's no need to go through that now. Then we're gonna start with the scan flows. Now, what are scan flows? And we're gonna talk a little bit about base airbox logic, okay? Okay, so scan flows are a lot of what Airbus is made up from and a lot of airlines as well and we normally start in a certain position and go in a certain direction so that it's easy to do every single time so we start on the overhead at the bottom left here we go from the bottom all the way to the top then from the bottom here all the way to the top and like this and like this and like that so you can see how you consistently go up the same way now what are we looking for remember with an Airbus a white light is a light that should be extinguished because it's not in the normal position. So we can see there's quite a lot of white lights on here that we may need to turn on and off. It's not always the case, but it predominantly is when we're going through these scan flows. After we've done the overhead, we move down. We start on the left here and we move across to the middle. Then we move backwards from here and we move forwards to here and then we move to the middle from here all the way along here into the middle and then we move to the pedestal where we come from the bottom of the pedestal all the way up from the bottom all the way up from the bottom all the way up and then we'll be programming the flight management computer so if you think about it the very last thing you do points to what you do next which is the flight management computer so let's start with this overhead scan flow now so the very first thing we do before we start these scan flows is we put the IRS's, which is number one, number two, and number three. So one, two, three. We put them into nav, and then we jump down to the FMS to do only one thing, okay? And then we go back to the scan flows. So all we have to do when we come here is go in it, clear the scratch pad messages, 
we're going from, remember, L, E, I, B to L, F, M, N, the city pair. We put that in, click return, and then we click align IRS. Now we leave it, okay? Now we, now we leave it and we go back to the overhead scan flow. We do this now so that we're not wasting time because this, you know, as you know, an IRS align takes about seven or 10 minutes. And that's why they say to do this sort of out of sequence. And now we go back to the overhead to continue the scan flow. Okay, starting bottom left, no smoking signs to auto, seatbelt signs can stay off because refueling hasn't been completed. If we're in the night time, you can put the dome, the storm lights, they all work the normal way. Low pressure lights, um, then expected. Low pressure servo lights, they're also expected. The fault lights for the spoilers are expected as well, along as the pitch feel. So then we go to the top, we've already put this into nav, so that's absolutely fine. Back to the bottom again, strobe light to auto, nav light to system one or system two, doesn't really matter. All the rest remain the same, making sure that this is off. ATS switches come on, your damper comes on. Pitch trims, we cannot put the pitch trims on until the IRSs are aligned, hence why we did it earlier. So let's try it now, and you see them click off. So we can just, we have to remind ourselves later on to click those on, or we can wait now until the IRS goes into the attitude phase or they're fully aligned. It's up to you. Galley to white light, so we can turn it off and basically now all the ovens and things in the cabin start working, otherwise before they don't. Making sure that all these switches look good, be in light green. We can do a standby generator test. It is not required for normal operations to the test, so we won't do it, but we could do it now. Continuing up the overhead. This, we make sure we leave an essential emergency and the engine one fire we do as a test now. We make sure the latch is secure. Press down the loop test. Okay, we can hear them. We see the lights, hear the noise. Squib test, that looks good. And this is good. Back down to the bottom again. These are off, this is on. Make sure this is off. Fuel looks good. All of these can remain off for now because we only need the one for the fuel pump making sure these are in line green. If the isolation valve is actually off, it can actually mean the engine can't start or shut the engine down. So this cuts off all the fuel from these tanks, so you must make sure the isolation valves are on. Reading light, this illuminates the pedestal below. APU fire test, remember we've already done it, so we don't need to do it again. This is the backup for the landing gear indicator, down and locked are in green, that makes sense. And then we can go to the top of here. Okay, cockpit door, this looks good. A little bit of explanation about how, so sorry, back to the bottom. So pressurization, system one, system two. So what we can do, kind of interestingly, if you push the system, see how it swaps between them? And if you turn off the system here, it will automatically swap to the other system because it has enough logic to know, well, that system doesn't work anymore. Making sure this is in the normal position, this can this auto pressure rate knob actually limits the amount, the speed at which the pressurization system can do its job. Uh, making sure that we don't see the arrow here, this is normal, these are both open, so this is the outflow valve position, so open, closed, so they're in the open position. Differential pressure, we leave these as they stand now. The reason we don't turn them on yet, even though they're white lights, is because they produce a lot of heat and we don't, we don't need them yet. Anyway. Moving on to the top of the overhead, make sure that the oxygen supply is on, make sure this is in the green van, make sure that's like this, so it's in above 1400 psi, so it's up to 2000 and then above 1400, which it is. Press this, test, we get engine squib test, we get the lights. Here we make sure that this is inboard, so that, they remember, this is overboard, this is inboard, we wanna make sure that it's in the overboard position, and then when the engine start, it will swap to inboard automatically. We're just making sure there's no white lights on here. Door control, a little bit of explanation about how the door works, because I find that quite a few people don't understand how a cockpit door works on an airliner. You don't have to lock it, it's all, always locked. It's, it's not like your house, you don't lock it and unlock it. If it's closed, it's locked. So you don't have to do anything with it. If the door is open, you will see the light shown here that the door is open. It's not that it's not locked. 
So the, the locking and unlocking system is for allowing people in and out. So in the normal condition, if it's closed, it's fine. You don't have to do anything else there. And now we go down to the bottom. This we must make sure isn't in the disarm position, it's in the arm position. We've already done this test, AP bleed is on, this looks good, pressure there looks good. This is where we can adjust the temperature of the zones that we want. We can actually view the temperature of the zones here rather than look at the screen. So for example, the cockpit is currently at around 26, 27, 24 degrees, something like that. And the air coming into the cockpit is here. So I think I'm feeling a little bit, uh, a little bit chilly. I think I want the, the cockpit to be a bit warmer. So I'm gonna increase the temperature of the cockpit and you'll see the duct temperature increase and eventually the temperature will increase overall. And actually the, 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 the aircraft's smart enough that it knows the size of the areas to heat up. So the bigger the area, the, the low, longer it takes to heat up, etc, etc. So we'll put that back to CRT, which means it's displayed on the screens. Making sure these all these lights are off. And that's done now. Now I can see that the aligning light's gone off, so let me try and re-put my pitch trims on. And there you go, they click on and they wait. So that's all done. So now we're gonna move on to the side scan before we go on to the FMS. Just making sure all these lights look good. These are our brightness knobs. I can see that everything looks fine. Making sure the flight director is on, making sure this is in nav. We have constraints normally selected to zoom around 15 miles, it's fine. We can leave this in map. We click DH for decision height, and we set this to minus five. This stops, it's like a Boeing actually, they have the same system. It stops it from triggering when it shouldn't do. So then we move along, we make sure we've got our first support. We'll come to that later on, and all the other modes generally look good. If this isn't illuminated, this whole panel, that's because the pitch trims are not on. If you don't have the pitch trims on, the AFS, the auto flight system, will not power on. Okay, so if this is blank, almost 100% guarantee you it's because the pitch trims are not on, okay? So, moving across to the side, make sure that the rat is off. There's no indication that it is on, but you just don't make sure you don't pull it, basically. And then we move along the side. We make sure that these are different brightness knobs for the instrument panels at the side and also for the main instrument panel, but it's daytime, so we don't need to worry about those. The only one we need to move a bit closer for is the oxygen test. We somewhat simplified the oxygen test, so if you just press this button, you'll hear a sound, and that is the oxygen test, seen as a valid pass. Then we're gonna move on to the center instruments, and we're just looking up here, this looks good, still looks in the green, don't see any of these lights showing on. Temperature makes sense, that we're showing 80 odd degrees Celsius, the engines were on before, these are all at zero. This all looks normal. Landing elevation, we must set our landing elevation, so in Nice it's 50 feet, so that looks good. Doors look good, everything else looks good. Landing gear lever test, we can, we can do the test if we need to, so landing gear and safe, system one. We can check the other system and leave it like that. Brake fans are off. So that's this flow done, so now we move to the bottom of the pedestal. Okay, these uh, instrument lights do the overhead lighting, so the overhead back lighting, so um, if you're at night time then you can see them a bit better. Making sure the ADFs, if you want to tune them, radios, this is what we talk to, this is the frequency, this is the volume knob. I'm not going to go over this because it's the same as basically every other airliner. Uh, the only difference being that the standby and your active frequency, you kind of toggle them over. It, it, makes, it makes sense to me, so this is your standby, this is your active, toggle it this becomes your active this comes your standby just play around with it for a few minutes to be honest it makes sense making sure this is off sport code we're not going to use today but it's fine you can do the test here if you want to it's not needed on standard operations these are the brightness for the two ecam screens and this is our systems display page control we don't need to go through it but this is how we will look at pressure fuel ac ap all this sort of stuff exactly the same as the a320 Make sure that this is reset and to zero. Weather radar, we want to make sure it's off. It's in this setting here, it's fine. And a bit tilted up. And this is just the same controls on the other side. We make sure that this is safe tied, so we make sure that it's closed. These actually fully function, by the way, the emergency cancel, normal cancel. They're used for if you get an ECAM you don't want, or you want to cancel them and go away, you can, you can do all of that, and it, and it fully works. 
And now we're going to move up to the FMS, finally. <laughs> well, we make sure, sorry, the flaps are at zero and the spoilers are disarmed, which they are, and then we move up to the FMS. And there, most of the flow is complete. Okay, let's talk about programming the FMS. If you're familiar with an Airbus, A320 or any other Airbus aircraft, we normally use the acronym DIFS RIP. So D I F S R I P, DIFS RIP. So we're going to use this acronym. So you type it out, you can put it in the other FMS on this side if you want to follow along. And we're going to go through what each one of these mean. D stands for data. So we've got REF, aircraft status. And what we want to check is A310-300, correct. Engine type, that's correct. And the active and secondary database. As you can see, they're data the same because we're drawing the nav data natively from within the sim. But uh, in the real aircraft, you'd have the previous and the current one. So we can see that it is the current nav data cycle. So that's good. That's what we're checking here. And we're checking the performance factor. You can't actually edit this on an A310. It's edited by engineers, but uh, so it's always zero zero for us. In different aircraft, it'd be different numbers, but that works the same way. So that's the D. I, we come to the in A page. So now we need to program the in A page. So we've already said we're going from Ibiza to Nice, and we can start to program it like this, okay? So latitude, longitude's fine. Cost index, we're gonna use 40. That's a generally good cost index for the A310. Cruise flight level 360 we're going up to. Our flight ID INI001. The cruise winds, remember today, I think the aloft winds are actually 207 at two. So this is where you would insert the cruise winds from your flight plan. But we have the calm weather preset, but I believe even when you select that, it has a very slight amount of wind. Tropo and temp, you, we're gonna leave this for now because it's Palm Day. Alternate is LFML, so that's uh, Marseille. You can click none or return, it's up to you. So that's the init A page done. So diffs rip, remember DI, and that's what we've done, the init A. F is flight plan. Okay, so we are now gonna look at the flight plan page. Now, actually, this is fairly similar to an A320 in terms of how it operates um, in the way that you program the FMS. There's, there are some things that you can see are different colors, it's all green, etc., etc. but you can see that the actual way that you put the route in, it's, uh, it's pretty similar. So let's start at LEIB, and we're gonna put the route up on the screen now that we're gonna use today. It's the same as the route that we used on the New to Airliner series, so it's gonna be runway 06, which we select first, Kaba to Romeo, and then we click Insert. So, similar, scrolling works the same way, so it's reverse, so up arrow to bring the page down. Nice, we're gonna be doing the ILS 04 left via the Alba 7 Romeo, so now we can see it's selected, selected. If we wanna use a transition, you just select it here. This is how you do the approach transition. And this should be the transition from the start. And then you'd select whichever one you want, but we don't want any today, so we click Insert. Boom, so that's the SID and the star put in. Now we need to put in the next part, so it's K-Bear, direct to LTAM. So what you can do is you can use the next waypoint feature, so E-L-T-A-N, put that in there, and it will put the next waypoint. Now we need to go on the airway, so we select LTAN, lateral revision, vertical revision, exactly the same as the A320. We're gonna go on the airway via the uniform November 853. We select the airway and now it shows all the waypoints that are available on that airway. And we're going off the airway at Lumas. So we scroll down and there's Lumas and we've inserted it. Now there is another way to insert an airway and we're gonna do that from Lumas. So we select lateral revision from Lumas on the left side, remember. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go, we could just click airway, do the same thing as we did before, but we can also do it another way. So we can type via to, go to this one here. So we're gonna go on the uniform mic 976 slash, so via this airway, via, go to this waypoint. 
So we're going to the Mike Romeo Mike. Boom. There we go, and it's done. So that's the same way as selecting the airway, clicking it, scrolling and clicking it. It's actually a little bit quicker, to be perfectly honest. That's called the via go to function. So we're going to do that again. So it's the uniform Yankee 122. So we're going via this airway to A B A L A K A black form and it puts in. So that's the whole route program. Now see how we have ablac once and twice for the arrival. We want to clear ablac, so you click clear like you would, it puts it into the scratch pad, and we click it. We click clear again, and we want to clear the discontinuity. So I know in a Boeing, for example, you use line selects to do this. Now, same as on the A320, if you click any of these buttons, it doesn't copy the name into the scratch pad. That just isn't the thing on, on Airbus aircraft. And you can't just simply click this and put it up here to clear this continuity. You must delete the discontinuity itself. So you click clear and we want to clear the discontinuity. And that's it. So now it's gone. So that's the whole route put in. So DIFS is secondary flight plan. Secondary flight plan is fully working on the A310. We, well, there's not much we can put in there. So we can just copy the active. So now we just have a copy of the flight plan in case anything goes wrong. Click back on the secondary flight plan. You can do some pretty cool stuff. You could um, put another route in there. You could put another runway in there. You can do lots of stuff. This is really flexible um, and it will be fully loaded for the whole flight. Today we're not really going to use it um, because it has more of a use for the arrival. You know, for big airports where let's say we're going into Heathrow and they've got 27 right, 27 left. You can have the approach to 27 right put in there when you're landing on 27 left. If uh, ATC say swap runways, pull heading, activate secondary, straight onto the runway. Pretty useful, um, but it fully works. So that's the S of DIFS, RIP. R stands for RADNAV, which is on the progress page for us now. And these show you which radio nav aids are going to be tuned. So, a little bit of explanation for this, uh, a little bit of background. See the A that's next to this? This stands for auto tuning. So, even though this aircraft's pretty old, it's pretty smart. So, it's saying, I think these two nav aids here are the most appropriate ones for me to be looking at right now. And it's saying, I'm making that decision myself. Fair enough. But if you want to make the decision for it, so you can say, no, I actually want you to tune a different one. You could say, so let's actually find one. Let's go onto the VFR map. And let's zoom out like this. So IBA. So see, it said, I think this is the most appropriate. Yeah, fair enough. Makes the most sense. But there's got to be another nav aid around here somewhere. That's an NDB. I would imagine there'd be one on here. So Mike, Juliet, Victor. So we can say, no, actually, I want you to tune the Mike Jewel Victor. And this is pretty cool because you don't necessarily need to know the frequency because you can type M, J, V, on. And there you go. And it's now tuned it. But do you see that you get the R? R stands for remote tuned. So it's saying, hmm, I'm in automatic, but you've told me to tune something else. So I'm going to remotely tune this if you really want me to. We can check, see the frequency, 113.3, 113.3. So it's done, it's done the right thing. And it will tune that VOR for you without, it won't change it because you've told it that's the one I want. To get rid of it, we can clear it, and then it will return back to its previously assigned one and go, okay, now I'm gonna do what I want to do. There's a third way to adjust the VOR, and what we must do is look up at the EFAS control panel. So if we select this to VOR, and we have to wait about four seconds, we look back down again, do you see now how the frequency is on here? And we have the M, M stands for manual. So you are now manually tuning this. So I can put the one three decimal three, and it's identified Mike Juliet Victor, but you see it's bold, it's bigger in text because it's manual, because I've done it, okay? So this is how you manually set a VOR 
if you want to. And this is also how you can set a course. So we can set the course in here if we want to fly VOR to VOR. So that's getting a little bit too advanced. That was just a bit of an explanation. We're going to put it back into nav. So let's look back up here. Put it back into nav. It blanks this, goes back to IBA, and you can see the, the needle on this side goes back to where it should be pointing, which is behind this, remember? So that's it, really. That was just a quick explanation. So rad navs, leave it alone. This is also where you see how far your distance is. You can also see your max and your optimum level. So we can go up to 410, optimum is 322. Uh, but we haven't put the weights in yet, so it doesn't really know anything. So, diffs rip. So we've done the R. We can now go back to the init page for init B. So this is where we tell it the weight of, our, of the aircraft. But we can't program the weight of the aircraft using the default system here. Now, if we try and use this, it will be overridden by the custom code inside the A310 as we have a custom fuel management and also fuel flow system. So you must edit the weights and the performance inside the EFB, which we're going to go across to now. So don't be surprised if you adjust something on this page and it doesn't adjust. The only figure that you can adjust is your center of gravity position. So you can move this forward and backward and it will not mess with it. So if you want to play around with the center of gravity, you shouldn't need to in normal operations, but feel free to if, if you want. Okay. So let's go across to the EFB. Okay, so let's take a look at the EFB. So we've got quite a few different options here, but we're going to go straight to the payload section, which is the section of the mass imbalance, so the scales here. So here we can see our dry operating weight, so this is the weight with no payload in, this is our payload, nothing. Zero fuel weight, it's the same obviously because we have no payload. Fuel, we expect to load, and our takeoff weight, gross weight. The live figures show what we actually have, and the plan is what we're going to do. So we're going to take 238 passengers, so full cargo, we'll take around three, three tons, something like that. And fuel, we're going to take 20 tons, which might sound familiar at this point, 20.1, that's fine. So now we can click apply. And we can see it shows our center of gravity. It moves the symbol in terms of where it is, in terms of the limits for the aircraft. This is our maximum takeoff weight, fuel loaded, zero fuel weight, and payload, which makes sense, right? If you want to adjust this, you can just adjust the sliders. If you adjust it, remember you must click apply, and then it will actually apply, and you get your trim setting for takeoff from here. So this is where it's stored. Good. So now let's look at the takeoff performance, which is the tab above. Tora, takeoff run available. You can find this on, on your chart. If you want to do an intersection takeoff, you can type in the value that you want, so, or you can also use the figure from the sim. So see how it populates 2799er? That's what it calculates full length takeoff from runway 06. So we're going to use that. Runway QDM, this is our runway heading. This is also coming straight from the sim, so it says 062. Wind, we're going to be using 000 at 0. Temperature, it's 15 degrees Celsius. Q&H, 1013. And remember, if you had this um, set to Imperial units, you'd be able to type that all in as well. Weight, I can't remember, so I'm going to go and check, is 122.3, if you round it up. So 122.3, click enter. Flaps, we've got three different takeoff settings 15 0, slats only, 15 15, standard, 20 20 is the short field, what you'd want to use on a, on a short runway. So we're going to do 15 15. Anti-ice off, air conditioning on. Calculate. So it gives us our flex temperature here, V1, VR, V2, and displays that down here as well, giving us an idea of how big the split is for these speeds. So there are takeoff performance figures. Now let's try and play around with this a little bit. 
So if I say I want to be a hundred and fifty times, can you see how it now has more of a split and it's drawn in, flex temperature goes down. Let's change the flap setting. You can also see how that changes again, change the flap setting again, flex goes down even more, temp speeds go up even higher. So all of this is dynamic. That's all I'm trying to show you is it really depends on where you are and what runway you're on. So we're going to go back to the 122.3 for our weight, calculate, and there are speeds. So let's put those speeds into the flight management computer.